Hi, I received a couple new things from Seed Studio that I'm going to review in this video. I have a new ice tower cooler for Raspberry Pi 4 and I have some kind of black plastic case to go along with it. So first a disclaimer, Seed Studio did provide me these items specifically for the purpose of a review. I did not go out and buy these on my own, they sent these to me. But you will still get my unbiased review of this product. Uh, so let's open this thing up and take a look at it. That's some kind of instructions. A heat sink with a fan. A couple leads here with DuPont connectors on them. Bag of hardware. Kind of a bracket that's going to hold it all down. A plastic base and a screwdriver. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out how to put this thing together. So I have a Pi 4B here. Uh, this is in a 3D printed case that I made uh, a while ago. Okay, instruction. Fixed mounting brackets with two M2.5 screws to the tower cooler. Pay attention to the direction of the mounting brackets. So here is the tower cooler. Add coupler sticks and nuts to the mounting hardware. That wants me to add some thermal tape to the Raspberry Pi. Then we're going to put this thing on there. Have a way, it looks like they want it facing like that. So it does seem to hold it fairly tightly and securely on there. No gap I don't see between the, the heat sink and the, uh, the CPU. Plenty tight, so I would think it's getting good contact. Next up, we're going to fix the acrylic protection plate. That would be this one. And then we want to connect the GPIO wires. And it wants this one hooked up to the 5 volt. Okay, while it isn't massively loud, it can get a little irritating. There's a quick solution moving the red power cable from the 5 volt to the 3.3 volt. Um, reduces fan speed, noise, and brightness. So let's try it out at 5 volt and see what it looks like and what it sounds like. Well, we've got it put together. Let's zoom in on it. So here I've zoomed in. We can take a closer look. Um, you can see it is um, it is lit up here. Let me turn out some of the lights. Uh, out some of the lights, maybe you can get a better idea of what the uh, the coloration of the fan. It's got some kind of a color change thing going on, some kind of LED that's automatically changing colors. Um, I suppose some people like that. I don't. I don't really care a whole lot about that. Let's uh, put the lights back on. Um, there is a gap here between the fan and the heat sink, so maybe some air would be lost there. But you know, if I put my hand back here, I believe I can. I can feel air getting sucked through the heat sink, so I think it's it is successfully sucking the air. And like I said, I don't think this thing is loud at all. I think this is probably fine. Um, if we did um, move it over here to the 3.3 volt side. Oops, I plugged it right back into the 5 volt. Let me try that again. Move it over to the 3.3 volt side. It's a little dimmer. It's a little slower. But let's, uh, for our benchmarking, let's, let's plug it back into the 5 volt side. We want to see what it does with uh, maximum cooling. So there it is. Um, we are booted up. So let me uh, let me transition over to the computer and we'll We'll kind of take a look at how this thing is performing. 
Okay, let's try this Seed Studio heatsink out. So here we've got a couple windows open into the Pi. This one here is a shell window where I'm going to type some commands to simulate load. Down here we have a process that I wrote that displays a histogram of the current running frequency as well as uh, the CPU temperature, and it'll print out if any throttling events occur. And then over here we have um, the RPI status daemon running on the Pi, where you can see that our Pi is currently pretty much unloaded and our temperature bounces around between 29 and 30 Celsius. Uh, so right now our frequency is below the maximum frequency of the Pi. Uh, because the Pi is idle, It is, uh, I think it's doing this for uh, power savings. It's lowering the CPU clock because it really doesn't have uh, much work to do. And we're bouncing around like 29, 30 Celsius. So this is this is really quite a low temperature looking at um, my previous benchmarks that I ran on a Pi. I was getting idle temperatures of 55 to 57 Celsius. That was with no fan at all. So this uh, CPU heatsink and fan has brought the idle temperature down from that 55 to 57 range to around 29 to 30 uh, Celsius, which that's a pretty low idle temperature. Uh, 55 to 57 would have been perfectly fine. We don't really have throttling problems until we get to 85, but let's let's throw some load at it. So I'm going to run sysbench with four threads. That will be enough to pretty much maximize the CPU, and we can see what effect that has. So we can see the CPU has bounced up to 1.5 gigahertz. It's no longer doing its... Um, throttling to save power. It's using the full frequency available um, in order to serve these four threads. Uh, the temperature is starting to go up. We're not getting any throttling events. Let's let it sit here for a minute or two and see how high the temperature gets. We'll wait until it seems like it's stable. So we've had it sitting here for several minutes. I can see this here bounces between like 36 and a half and 39 point something. It is, I don't think it's going to get any hotter than that. Uh, the CPU is fully loaded with this Sysbench running four threads. Uh, looking over here at top, we can see uh, Sysbench using 360% of the CPU. Uh, the rest of the CPU going to system processing and such. You know, here, look at uh, here. We've got 90% user, 9.8 system, and... Um, 0% idle. So we're pretty much using the maximum capabilities of this Pi at standard clock rate. Um, the temperature is well under control. Like I said before, you don't start throttling until you get up around, you know, in the 80 Celsius range. So so there's no throttling at all occurring. This heatsink is fully suitable for running a Raspberry Pi using the standard, um, the standard CPU frequency. Uh, now let's take a look and see what would happen if we try to overclock this CPU. So I'm going to exit here. So we've actually got uh, instructions here from Seed Studio that tell how to overclock the CPU. Edit uh, bootconfig.txt and we will look for over voltage. Here, over voltage 2, arm frequency 1750. Let's try that one first. And we will reboot. Okay, here we're back up with the uh, CPU frequency set to 1750 megahertz. We also increase the voltage. Uh, so that's probably why we're seeing a slightly higher um, idle temperature here. We're getting idling around 32 Celsius, whereas before we were getting it around 29 to 30. Um, we're still um, operating well below uh, fully utilized and the, the Pi is still slowing itself down because it doesn't have any utilization. So let's load up uh, Sysbench. Let's load up Sysbench and start giving it that four threads of load and we will see the CPU temperature rise again. And as before, we'll give it a few minutes to see what happens. Okay, so it's been sitting here for several minutes. I wanted to get some confidence that it started to level off. Uh, we can see it's running at, uh, it bounces around between like 40 and a half up to 42 and a half. Uh, we can go over here, we can take a look at the graph. And we can see it's it's pretty much flattened off here. It's not really doing any any rise anymore.
So I think at an overclock of 1.75 uh, gigahertz, this thing is perfectly stable. Again, we're well below that kind of around 80 Celsius where trouble really starts happening. Um, no throttling has occurred. Uh, this heatsink can handle it. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to increase this again. Yes, boot config dot text. And let's go down. They've got instructions here for overclocking to 2 gigahertz. So let's set that to 6. We'll reboot. And as soon as it's back up, we'll take a look and we'll see uh, what's going on again. Okay, so we're back up again. Um, we have increased the frequency so it can go up as high as uh, 2 gigahertz. Um, temperature's a little bit high at idle. Um, Probably again because we've raised the uh, the CPU voltage a little bit more. Um, as usual, we're idle, so it's not even attempting to run at full speed. It's kind of going as high as 1.3 gigahertz. It's not really going to go up to the 2 gigahertz until we started giving it some load. So let's run Sysbench again. So now we see it has gone all the way up to 2 gigahertz. We're using uh, full resources at this time. The temperature will start going up and as before we'll give it a few minutes to see uh, how high the temperature gets. Okay so it's been running here for a while. Um, no throttling has occurred. It's running up here. It bounces up as high as like 49 and a half. Goes down to um, 47 point something. Looking over here statistics. Zooming in, we can see it's still bouncing around a little bit, but I think it's really pretty flat here in this range. I don't think it's really going to go much higher than where it's at now. Uh, so there was one more overclock level that they recommended, and it says this here will have stability problems, um, raising the frequency up to 2.147. But um, I would probably never do that in practice. But let's let's um, let's try it out and see. Will it boot? And um, can we get it to work? So let's uh, sudo emacs boot config dot text over volt. And what did they say? They said to go to six two one four seven. And let's see if it boots up. Okay, we have booted up successfully with the CPU clocked at 2147. The temperature at idle is 33 point something. Uh, CPU is bouncing around as usual because we're at idle. Let's hit it with Sysbench and see what happens. So there, we're 100% at 2147. And we should see some temperature rise. We'll take a look. Uh, we'll let it run for a few minutes, see how high it gets. Okay, so it sat here for several more minutes. Um, I've added some additional load. I added um, a thread here that is recompiling PI GPIO. Um, there's still the four sysbenches. And there's also a process that is listing files over NFS. So we should be exercising the whole pie, the CPU, a little bit of storage and some uh, some NFS access. Um, and still, we're not breaking a sweat here on temperature. It's bouncing around between 49 and 52. Uh, going here to the graph, uh, we can see it's pretty much their level at the 50 line. So this is really, I think this is as much load as you can throw at a Raspberry Pi, even overclocked. Uh, this heatsink is more than large enough to handle it. Um, no throttling events occurring. Um, it seems to be pretty solid, even though uh, Seed Studio said we could start experiencing um, throttling problems or stability problems at this level of overclock. It's not really a problem, uh, as far as I can tell here. Okay, let's also take a look at this case that I ordered. Um, looks like some kind of laser cut acrylic case. 
get it out of here. Um, it does come with another one of these little fans. I think it's the same fan as that one. And I think it did have some instructions. Let's see how to do this. Uh, black case with ice tower cooler. Yeah, so we can put our ice tower cooler on this. How to assemble. Okay, it took a little bit of trial and error, but I do think I got this slices case properly mounted together with the, um, the heat sink. Um, it's just a, basically a matter of getting the appropriate layers of these sandwiched at the right places. Um, this black and this um, clear layer here are about the same height as this standoff, so it holds a heat sink about the same height above that it did uh, without the slices case. Um, I'm not real fond of these uh, slices type cases anymore in 2020. It, it feels like people have, you know, 3D printing has pretty much eclipsed the need for these uh, as long as you have a 3D printer. But if you don't have a 3D printer, uh, something like this slices case does work out for you. You know, it does protect your pie, um, keeps you from getting stuff in there that'll touch uh, the bits that you could short out while still providing access to the GPIO. So now is the point where I say, would I buy this product myself and use it? Uh, well, it is a nice product. I like the way that it mounts. Um, the, the thermal pads seem to work well. The mounting points seem to hold it securely. It seemed to conduct the heat away in my tests well. Uh, the big disadvantage is that you can't use a standard hat with this. So um, it's, you know, any, any tall heat sink is going to be that problem. I do a lot of work with hats, so this kind of goes sideways from my usual use case. If I had a case where I did want to overclock a pie, um, I think this solution would work out great. Um, and even if I wanted to use a hat, there are solutions where you can come off with a ribbon cable and you can put your hat alongside if you can't put it on top. Um, so you, you could get by, you could do it. Um, I don't have a case myself where I need to do it. But people, um, please do respond to the video or to the blog post and let me know if, um, if you have a case where you overclock a Raspberry Pi or you have used a tower cooler like this and what that use case is because I would uh, honestly be interested to hear um, what people do with this. So um, in short, I would say this is, I would recommend this product. It, I think it worked well. I would recommend it if you have a case where you need that level of cooling and you need to do that overclocking. Thank you very much and thank you Seed Studio for sending me this uh, cooler. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.